Uh, my topic is uh, focused on acceleration of CFD simulations with AI. Uh, my name is uh, Christopher Rorick. I am a CTO of Byte Lake, and I am also an assistant professor at Częstochowa University of Technology. And today I will discuss uh, a topic related with CFD uh, acceleration with uh, our product, which is called CFD Suite. Mm, so firstly, uh, CFD is a branch of uh, is a branch of uh, this computational fluid dynamic. This is a branch of uh, fluid dynamic. Uh, that allows you to solve uh, many different problems, uh, beginning from aerodynamic solutions or to simulate uh, how far will the fire spread and what is the pollution level, uh, agglomerations, and others. But today I will focus uh, on uh, a problem that is based on uh, mixing uh, some substance. So uh, if you use some chemical products like paints or uh, toothpaste or creams or uh, drugs, uh, it is very likely that firstly those ingredients that are uh, used to, to produce your final product uh, needs to be uh, firstly mixed in tanks. And uh, to do this, uh, we use uh, CFD simulations. Here we are working with, uh, with, with a, a solver that is called Mixit that allows you to uh, simulate uh, phenomenons that are uh, based on mixing some ingredients uh, and in the result to, to show you how those ingredients are um, what is the consistency of them how are they if they are mixed well if they are some uh, areas that are not mixed well or, or mixed good and what is important uh, how to set, how to select some parameters of your tanks to provide uh, good mixing. Such parameters include uh, number of impellers, the liquid level, uh, angle of your uh, of your impeller. Sometimes uh, you need to use some buffers in your tanks. Uh, sometimes you need to use a different shape of tanks and everything like this is that could be simulated with Mixit. Uh, Mixit is a tool from the three, diag from three diagonal solutions. Uh, usually such simulations uh, it, it takes from four to eight hours. Uh, however, uh, those simulations needs to be uh, repeated many times uh, to find the best configurations of your parameters. So, uh, so, so uh, the process of uh, of calibrating your uh, your machine looks like this. So, firstly, you start with some basic config of your uh, tanks with maybe single impeller with two impellers. Then you uh, execute your CFD simulation uh, with Mixit tool, and you are analyzing the results. Then you uh, improve something. Maybe you add some a new impeller. Maybe you move it up or down, and maybe you change the liquid level or change the angle of your impeller. And you need to uh, execute your simulation once again. 
Uh, so this is a very time consuming process. And our goal uh, is to reduce uh, the execution time of the, uh, of, of the simulation. Uh, we are doing this with our AI CFD suite solution, which allows us to reduce um, CFD simulations from hours to, to a couple of minutes. Uh, here is the idea of our solution. So uh, traditional workflow, workflow of CFD simulation Looks, looks like this. So firstly, you need to provide some uh, preliminary stages like modeling and meshing. Then you are executing your CFD simulation. Uh, in general case, CFD simulation can take from hours to weeks. In uh, this specific case, when we talk about uh, simulations executed by Mixit, we focused on uh, on uh, a group of simulations that takes about uh, four hours to eight hours. And, uh, uh, and are executed on the clusters. Uh, our CFD suite is focused on, uh, uh, on, on this black box part. So, uh, we don't touch modeling part, we don't touch meshing. Uh, we focus on uh, reduction of CFD simulation. Um, such kind of simulation that we are focused on currently belongs to a group of steady state simulations. It means that uh, uh, in result, we achieve a final state of the simulation and uh, we don't really care about intermediate iterations of our, simu of our simulations. So uh, we only focus on the final steady state. Uh, so we don't need to have as a result all intermediate uh, results from the simulations, but only the final one. Uh, it allows us to reduce the number of iterations and uh, predict the final convert state from the CFD solver. Mm. And this is how uh, it looks like in details. So uh, firstly, we need to provide modeling and matching. Uh, in traditional workflow, and if we integrate our CFD suite with the with the Mixit solver, we need to do it. We, we need to also provide modeling and uh, meshing from the original solver. Then we need to execute some initial elements of the simulation, so some initial uh, iterations. Uh, with this simulation, we uh, configure it in this way that uh, we execute 5,000 iterations. Uh, however, to predict the final steady state, we just need to take 3.2% of the iterations generated by the simulation. Based on 3.2%, we are generating the final state. Uh, the CFD solver returns the data in the open form format, since the Mixit is based on, on the open form framework. So firstly, we need to uh, import data from the open form to uh, our CFD suite. Then we provide uh, inferencing, where we predict the final state. And at the end, we need to export data to open form format. Uh, and now, uh, our CFD suite can be configured in one from three uh, ways, three modes. 
fast, medium, and accurate. Uh, fast mode allows us to uh, take a look on the final results if we have a large number of possible configurations to check. And fast mode is designed to select the most uh, promising group of solutions. Uh, then we can move to medium or accurate uh, mode to simulate the final uh, config and to validate how good our configuration is. Uh, our, uh, our solution allows us to reduce uh, execution time of CFD simulations from four hours to about nine minutes in the fast mode. Um, in the accurate mode, it allows us to reduce uh, these four hours to about 24 minutes. Uh, and how the speedups looks like in details. So firstly, we need to execute the simulation, uh, but not the 100%, only about 3.2% of the simulation is executed. And during this time, we have no speedup because during this time, you are executing the original solver. Then, we have uh, then we have executed our CFD suite, and our CFD simulation in result is executed twenty is executed by the factor of twenty eight. So we can say that the whole simulation is uh, reduced. The execution time is reduced twenty eight times, or we can say that. 3.2% of the simulation is not uh, accelerated at all. However, 96.8% uh, uh, of the simulation is uh, accelerated 261 times. In result, in result, uh, we have uh, such uh, visualizations. On the left side, we can see uh, the original re result generated by CFD solver. On the right side, we can see predictions with our AI module. Um, here we have three different quantities. The first one is uh, velocity, vector side, the second one is a pressure scalar fault, and the last one is kinetic energy. Uh, we agreed with our partner from Mixit that uh, velocity and pressure are two of the most significant quantities. So, uh, so, so, so the, the user requirement is to uh, provide the highest accuracy for those two uh, arrays, for those two quantities. Uh, on the right side, we can see uh, the accuracy uh, in the numbers. So here we can see uh, how we compare our solution with uh, the CFD solver. So here we have uh, a set of uh, a set of metrics that allows us to estimate how good our solution is. The first one is person correlation coefficient, uh, which is in average uh, 0 0.97. Um, the Spearman's correlation coefficient, which is 0 0.93. The second one is, uh, the, the third one is uh, root mean square error. And the final one uh, is histogram comparison, uh, where we create two histograms. The first one is created for, um, for, for the uh, uh, AI-based solution. The second one is for a CFD solver. And we calculate the coefficient of determination between, um, between those two histograms. And in the result, uh, we estimate uh, how good our solution is. 
Now, I would like to focus on uh, performance results and, uh, and scalability. So firstly, uh, I would like to introduce which, what kind of tests we executed and uh, what platform uh, was used during the experiment. So we are using chemical mixing steady state simulations. We are simulating uh, phenomenon that includes less than 2 million cells. And we are focusing on, iter on simulations that uh, require to execute less than 10,000 iterations. So in our, uh, in, our, uh, in, in our simulation, it was 5,000 iterations in, in this test that I showed. Our hardware configuration includes a uh, uh, single HPC node equipped with uh, two sockets or uh, CPU containing Intel Xeon Gold uh, 6148 CPU clocked 2.4 GHz. Uh, this node is also equipped with two NVIDIA V100 uh, GPUs with 16 gigabytes each on board. Uh, and for 400 gigabytes of the host memory. Uh, we have also compared our results using uh, Intel CPU only HPC cluster, which is located in uh, Wrocław Supercomputing and Networking Center in Poland. And then we, then we use uh, only a CPU based uh, platform equipped with Intel Xeon CPU E5-2670 clocked uh, 2.3 gigahertz. Um, and this CPU is uh, equipped with 12 cores. Uh, those Intel Xeon Gold CPUs are equipped with 20 cores per CPU. Uh, we compare our results also with um, the desktop platform that contains uh, Intel Core i7, clocked 3.4 gigahertz. Here we have four cores and uh, NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan GPU. Um, and finally, a single HPC node uh, with Intel Xeon CPU E5-2695, clocked 2.3 gigahertz, uh, equipped with 12 cores. Uh, okay, and uh, what is what? What are important aspects of our solution that should be taken into account into our uh, performance results? So, first thing is that uh, our solution belongs to a group of memory bound, since uh, we are working with three-dimensional domain. Uh, we have uh, relatively uh, large meshes, which exceed 1 million cells. And to fit our networks, uh, it is required to execute uh, about 24 iterations uh, of the CFD simulations. And those 24 iterations are taken as an input to our AI model. So uh, we have quite a large amount of data. From the other side, um, to support such large amount of data by AI model, uh, we need to reduce uh, architecture of our AI model. So uh, we use a reduced version of ResNet neural network. Uh, so from one side, we have reduced architecture of AI models. So we have a reduced number of operations. From the other side, we have a large amount of data, which makes our both training and inferencing part memory bound. Uh, okay, so as I said, we need to firstly take uh, a set of uh, simulations to fit the network. And currently we collected uh, 
about 75 cases, so 75 simulations to train our model. Uh, and in result, we generate models that allows us to uh, provide uh, general solutions across uh, a set of parameters, including number of impellers, angle of impellers, liquid level, uh, speed level of uh, impeller expressed with uh, RPMs, uh, viscosity level, uh, yes, the, those parameters. Uh, and here we can see the first part of our results. Here we can see uh, a scalability uh, of our results where we have, uh, when we're, where we use 64 nodes uh, of BM cluster. Here uh, we execute uh, this, uh, this experiment uh, with three different models with some uh, different configurations and for three different uh, quantities uh, of, of the simulation. And uh, we used here uh, TensorFlow and Keras to, to, um, to implement our AI model and to parallelize our model across cluster, we used a Horovod. Uh, as we can see, our um, efficiency is more than 90%, up to eight nodes. Then we can see that uh, the efficiency of our uh, solution is a little bit uh, smaller. However, our solution is still scalable up to 64 nodes, uh, where we achieve a speed up equal to 48 using 64 nodes, which is quite good, uh, taking into account that uh, we used only a reduced uh, ResNet neural network architecture, where uh, original uh, ResNet networks is much more bigger than we used since, because we, we used here only uh, about eight to 16 layers of ResNet neural network. Mm. Another solution, another benchmark is shown here. So here we have the comparison between CPU and GPU training part. So as we can see, uh, here we executed uh, our uh, training model uh, on the BEM cluster. Uh, which is still scalable. However, here we used, here we have the metrics expressed with number of cores. There we have number of nodes. And we compare this solution with a single GPU uh, training using uh, NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan and NVIDIA GeForce V100, a single socket of uh, Intel Xeon Gold CPU, two sockets of Intelsion Gold CPUs and uh, two NVIDIA uh, V100 GPUs. And now a short comment about those results. So the first thing that we can conclude here is that uh, GPU uh, is uh, as fast as about four nodes. We can assume that using uh, four nodes with Intel Xeon Gold CPUs will give comparable performance as a single uh, node equipped with uh, a single NVIDIA V100 GPU. So the training is about four times faster on the V100 than on, v on Intel Xeon Gold CPU. From the other side, uh, we don't see uh, uh, significant performance improvement when, when, when we use two sockets against a single socket. So, uh, however, we can see a good performance uh, improvement when we see 
uh, different nodes across different nodes. So this is resulted from the fact that if we have a distributed memory model in our parallelization, uh, then we can achieve a better scalability than with shared memory model. Uh, it is a result from the fact that our, our solution is memory bound. And here, the most important is uh, related with uh, data transfer, not with compute power. So this is why, uh, this is why uh, there is no big difference between two Intel Xeon Gold versus a single uh, Intel Xeon Gold. Uh, from the other side, we have an inferencing uh, part of the simulation. And here we have a different trend. So here we can observe that uh, we can achieve about 10 times faster inferencing with Intel CPU than uh, GPU. So here we have an opposite trend. So training is about four times faster on the GPU, but inferencing is faster on the CPU. And once again, uh, this is resulted from the fact that uh, when you execute inferencing on the CPU, first you need to send your data from the host memory to GPU global memory space. Then you need to provide uh, inferencing and send your data back through the PCI Express. Uh, moreover, there are some additional operations on the GPU that uh, makes your inferencing very slow. And in this case, we observed that memory allocation was significant for this uh, part. However, in the CPU, uh, uh, we are working on the host memory with, and we have reduced memory transfer. We don't need to copy data between GPU and uh, host memory. So this is the reason why uh, inferencing is significantly faster on the CPU than on the GPU. Another um, benchmark here is the comparison between a standalone TensorFlow solution versus a solution optimized with OpenVM. And uh, once again, we can observe that uh, on the Intel Xeon Gold CPU, uh, there is uh, a very little performance improvement when using OpenVM. This is resulted from the fact that uh, we use here a, a reduced ResNet uh, network architecture. So it means that our uh, network architecture uh, of our uh, AI model is uh, very optimized and there is no big space for optimizing it by OpenVINO, okay? Because the optimization performed by OpenVINO relies on uh, reducing some uh, empty layers, empty weights. And uh, when you have uh, more layers, you can drain more from OpenVINO. If you use optimized uh, uh, neural network architecture, and uh, when your uh, neural network is uh, relatively small, uh, then uh, we don't observe significant uh, performance improvement of uh, using OpenVINO. However, uh, it's still a little bit uh, faster with it than without it. So we can conclude that uh, inferencing is about 10 times faster on Intel Xeon Gold CPU than on NVIDIA V100 GPU. Um, and uh, thank you for your attention. This is uh, the last thing that I would like to share with you. This is our C-level team. Uh, so on the left and right side are our co-founders of CBiteLate in the middle uh, uh, it's me. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, 
I will be happy to give you some answers. Thank you very much, Christoph. Uh, just a quick head, uh, quick shout out, the man with the million dollar smile there, uh, Marcin. Um, he was instrumental in getting, everybody, uh, getting this event organized this time. So a big shout out uh, from, uh, for him. Let me there, take a quick uh, look at the questions. I saw that Ashut had already asked one and it's a question specifically about the input data. Could you provide some more information about the input data for, yes. for your modeling? Okay, so. Um, Actually, hold just a quick sec, Chris. I was just gonna say, if anybody else has any questions, don't hesitate to put on the chat. I will be following uh, right after this one. No, okay. Chris. Okay, so um, it works in this way. So uh, Mixic executes 5,000 iterations. So uh, we take, so, so we need to firstly execute 3.2% of, uh, of this uh, 5,000 iterations. So uh, just a moment, 5,000 times 3.2. Okay, so uh, it means that we have to execute 160 iterations of the CFD uh, solver. Then we take every 20 iteration as an input to our model. So in a result, we take eight iterations, eight initial uh, iteration distributed every 20 uh, from, the, uh, from, uh, from the CFD solver. And this is our input to uh, predict the, the final convert state. And this is in the fast mode. In the, uh, in the accurate mode, we need to take 24 uh, initial iteration distributed every 20 from the CFD solver as an input. Then we need to uh, change the format that would be adaptable by our solver. Uh, we 